It's my pleasure to present to you about Magic App functionality. This is going to be a brief overview of key features. So there's a lot of different research elements that we've done and ways that we've developed Magic App. It's developed through our research projects and also through user uh, experience uh, that we have and feedback. But today I'm just going to focus on some key elements related to how guidelines look for the viewer side of things. And then I'm going to go into how guidelines look for the editing side of things. So first of all, I'm going to show you what looking at guidelines in Magic App would be. So this is basically the interface. We actually are up to 282 guidelines. I think we might be up to 284 as of this morning, actually. And uh, you can look through the guidelines. You can scroll through all of them. You can also use the search feature to look for a particular title, or you can filter by a specific organization to find organization-specific guidelines. As Thomas mentioned, today I'm going to be talking about the arthroscopic surgery for a degenerative knee disease uh, clinical practice guideline that we have in Magic App. This was published uh, some time ago, back in 2017, but the recommendation has not changed. So when you open up a guideline in Magic App, this is the basic interface. I'm showing you a very simplified guideline with only a single recommendation. And I want to highlight that on the left hand side, you have your chapters which we call sections. And then in the center, you have your content. And something I want to flag is that in Magic App, we structure things in a uh, multi-layer format. And that was something that came out from the uh, Decide project that was done several years ago. Uh, that was a great project and a big EU collaboration. And there was a lot of user testing with clinicians and users of evidence that showed that people want to see the most important information up first, but they want to be able to access additional information in layers. So the idea is that Magic App is a layered platform where you can see the recommendations, but then things like background or supporting evidence, you'd have to click through it in order to see it. So if you click the more button, you can see additional text related to the background. And then if you want to collapse that, you can click less. And the next thing I want to talk about is what the research evidence looks like. So this is your standard summary findings table. There's 12 outcomes. I'm just going to show you two just to highlight them. So pretty standard, considering that this is a Cochrane presentation. I'm sure most folks are pretty familiar. We have our outcome and our time frame. You might have the clinical importance there your study results and measurements, so your relative effects, and also the number of patients and participants and follow-up time. Next, you have your absolute effect estimates, and here you have your comparator and your intervention. So in this particular case, our intervention is arthroscopy and our comparator is conservative management. Uh, next, the quality of the evidence, and lastly, the plain language summary. Something I want to highlight is we also have an option to have a graphical view of the evidence. So here is a presentation that shows the direction of effect with these arrows. This is something that is increasingly used in a kind of visual abstract presentation in a lot of journals. And this is something that automatically gets generated in Magic App if you wish. In general, there's a lot of features in Magic App and you have the option to use them or not. And if you don't use them, it's not that users see that those things are missing. It's just that there's a lot of flexibility to turn features on and off, whether or not you have content in them. I do want to flag that there is a practical issues section, but I'm not going to get into the practical issues or the decision aid. I'm going to leave that to Thomas to discuss when he discusses the Match It tool. And then we also have an option to include a summary. So this is data that you might have related to the evidence profile, so anything related to the PICO, there's a lot of flexibility with the kind of text you have here. Next, I want to cover the evidence to decision framework that we have available. So we have the four-factor framework and the seven-factor framework. Here I'm just showing you three factors, but this is again pretty standard grade methodology, and you can add whatever text you might be, find useful. You can add uh, a rating, and then you can also decide whether you're going to have just the summary, or you're going to have the full evidence to decision factors uh, with the judgments and the research evidence and additional information. Next, we have the rationale. So essentially, a summary of your evidence to decision factors and your evidence and how your guideline panel came up with the recommendation. And lastly, your practical information. So this is 
information that would be useful for your guideline users in order to make the recommendation actionable. So now I'm going to get into the authoring side of things. So the first thing I wanted to flag is it's very easy to add new sections. We don't pre-dictate what kind of section content you have. There's a lot of flexibility there. So you can create subsections, uh, sub subsections, and move things around. The way you move things is through a drag and drop feature. And next, I want to discuss the evidence. So you can create PICOs either manually. You can import them from a RevMan 5 file. You can import them from another Magic App guideline, or you can import them from GDT. And essentially, once you have your PICO structure, you can add your outcomes. And this is what the outcome editing side looks like. You see little pencils everywhere, which means you can edit that data. I also want to flag that at the top, I'm under the evidence profile side of things. And this is also where you add your practical issues, look at your graphical view, look at your summary. And there's some additional things you can do with PICO codes, and that's related to integration with EHR, but I won't be covering that today. So in the first column, we just have our outcome description. So things like the time frame, the clinical importance, you can also add a detailed description. Next, we have our data. So you have your source of the evidence, and then there's ways you can drill down to see additionally where the evidence is coming from. And if you import content from RevMan files, you can actually see the individual study data that's automatically pulled from those files. There are several options for which kind of relative effects you wanna use and different kinds of confidence intervals. You can set your baseline risk. And lastly, you can either auto-calculate the, um, the absolute effect estimates, or you can manually add them if there's any kind of additional adjustments that are needed. Next, you rate the evidence certainty. So there's some helpful guidance here. So at every, every factor, you rate down whether there's a serious or very serious, or in the case of imprecision, extremely serious risk, um, reason to downgrade. And we have some little text boxes to kind of help you come up with comments, but you can also generate them yourself. And whenever you rate down, you're automatically nudged to create a comment for that. And then at the end, you also decide if there's a reason to rate up your certainty. And based on how many times you've rated down, it does calculate the certainty level for you and it provides a short summary of assessment. So it will say due to serious imprecision in this case, or however many reasons you graded it down, you can also add a custom comment here as well. Lastly, the plain language summary. So we've actually partially automated this in order to help folks write the plain language summaries. And this is based on the grade guidance on writing plain language summaries. So because of the uh, evidence certainty that I have for this particular outcome, it does highlight for me what I should be using in terms of the phrasing. So here, for example, if I had low certainty evidence, depending on the importance of the benefit or harm or whether there was a null effect, I get these suggestions for the text and I can actually choose that standard text and it will automatically create uh, that, uh, that statement for me based on what I've specified as the comparator and intervention. And then you can also, of course, custom add your own your own statement, and then you can also decide on the direction of benefit if you do want to use the graphical effects. As for the summary, it's a plain text box, so you can add whatever content you would like here. There's a lot of flexibility. And next, I wanna get into the recommendations themselves. So I wanna flag that for the background, you see that there's just a text box here. And if I open up that little pencil, I have an open text box where I can add whatever text I want. Here you can use pretty standard word processing elements such as changing the font, adding citations, adding hyperlinks. Uh, there's a way to turn on and off track changes, add images, add tables, that sort of thing. And next I want to look at the way that you create recommendations. So we have options for grade recommendations, but we also have options for info boxes and other non-grade related recommendation labels that you want to use. And the way that we create our recommendations is again through a text box. So there's a lot of flexibility there. There's also options to add remarks and headers if you'd like to as well. And moving into the evidence to decision framework. 
So here, once again, we have our set categories. So in this particular case, I've used the four factor framework with summary text, and I've just opened up a text box just to show you. And again, there's flexibility here with how you write your statement. We do provide some guidance in terms of what the statements should include based on grade, um, grade guidance. And next, I wanna talk about the references. So there's several ways you can add references. You can either add them manually. So for example, if you have some unpublished data, you can import references via the PubMed ID. You can import them using an RIS file. So pretty much any reference management software will have those files available for you, or you can upload them through a RevMan file. And once you have your content ready, you can publish and publishing is quite fast and easy. So depending on the size of your guideline, if you have a fairly small guideline, it takes less than five minutes. Uh, once you have a very large guideline with a lot of content, it takes a bit longer, but obviously that's a very different publishing model compared to publishing in journals. Uh, it's much faster. And we do have a lot of folks who publish in journals and publish in Magic App at the same time. So there are ways you can kind of integrate your journal publication and the Magic App publication like we do with the BMJ, for example. So once you're ready to publish, you can just select that option and you can publish a new version and you can decide if that version is going to be publicly accessible, if it's going to be a major publication or a minor one. If you want to make any comments, this is particularly relevant if you have living evidence and you want to comment on what's changing between versions. And then you just state the publishing date, the last evidence search, and you publish a new version. So things I wanted to flag for you, we have a version history that you have available and you can decide which versions are publicly accessible. So folks can actually access previous versions of your guideline if they want to, and they can see the what the guideline looked like in Magic App at the time, and they can also pull the uh, PDF copy of it, and then they can also link to it. And another thing I wanted to flag is that the default that we recommend for people to use whenever they link to the content is called the permalink. So that's a link that means that no matter whether you change your content and you publish your content again, that permalink will always take you to the most recent version of your content. As I mentioned just now, you can link to previous versions, but generally most folks use the always published version, which means that you never end up with broken links once you update your evidence. And two more things I wanna mention is the permissions feature. So this is how the collaboration works in Magic App. So you just add additional users and there's different kinds of levels of permission that you can give people. So whether you want people to be uh, fully authoring the guideline, if you want them to be able to publish as well, or if you want them to just be able to review the content, there are ways you can adjust that. And lastly, I wanted to flag that everything that people do is captured in real time. So sort of like Google Docs, but whenever people make changes, everything is gonna be timestamped, their actions are gonna be logged, and you can actually access all of that in an activity log and you can filter through to find specific activities about a certain recommendation, about a certain user, and there's a lot of flexibility there. So that's really helpful for auditing.